Hello and welcome to this tutorial. In my last devlog, I got a question about how I created these procedural walls that you can see in this testing level. So I thought I would make a quick tutorial about it. And here is just the end result of it. You can see that uh, it's generated and you can choose the width, depth and the height. Like this. Height, depth. And you can also choose the spacing between the different objects or the cubes, whatever you choose as well as a random offset uh, if you want to offset in a special direction uh, maybe on the height as well like this yeah and so we can also change the material to anything you want for all of the objects uh, I, yeah. and you can also choose if you want to have random meshes or a single object so right now it's set to random objects, but you can also do a specific one based on an index, like this. So that's what I'll show you right now. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing is to create actor blueprint. So let's do that, we'll just name it uh, walls.tutorial or something. And then uh, drag it over here. We don't need a vent graph and we will use the construction script instead. So what it's about is looping over the three axes x, y and c and depending on how many walls we want there or cubes we will spawn with a for each loop that many or for loop actually yes. So if we take a for loop this one is for the width we say this one is for the depth and this one is for the height of course so the first index is zero and the last index will be how many you want so width and this one we will call depth and this one we will call height okay and next we also need to choose what mesh we want for this so inside of the 3D view, we can add an um, instance static mesh like this and just name it like box or something. And then we add it here. And after this, we can add instance. So we create an instance of other boxes over here. So yeah. And we will probably need a little bit more space here. And we can split this. And right now we only want the location. You can also play with rotation and scale if you want, but I won't be doing that. So we also uh, want to make this public, and we can make uh, the default value something like 5, 5, and 5. And after that, we can add a new variable for spacing. This will be the distance between the cubes. It can be a float, I think. And for me, a value of 200 worked for making them be right next to each other. So the first thing we want to do is multiply this by the spacing, each one of these. So let's just copy this and take the spacing uh, Oh no, not this one. We want to go out of the index actually, sorry about that this, like this, and like this, uh, yeah, okay, so now if we plug this into the x, y, and oops, c, it's a little bit unstructured, but I think you understand it still, so if we do this and we try it, and we take this one and put it in the here, uh, oh yeah, we also need to go into the box and set a static mesh and the one I have is inside here it's Just call it cube and you can choose anyone you want uh, It doesn't need to be a cube even Just a shape that can tile I guess So here is what we have right now uh, You can change the width, depth and the height as well You can also choose the spacing looks pretty cool so let's reset this 
and the next thing I want to do is be able to have some randomness to it based on the axis. So I'll clean this up a little bit by using these reroute nodes you can get if you double click. Like this. And uh, first thing we'll add another one. So maybe width and offset max. This is the maximum amount of offset uh, that a cube can have to another cube. And uh, default value can be zero, so no randomness at all. And this is something we will want to, or actually, we want to put it at one because we will be multiplying this. So put a multiplication here. And then we do random float in range. Still pretty messy, but yeah. So between zero and that, and probably you want to make it so it's between the negative and positive of this one. So we can multiply this as well by minus one. So the offset is in both directions, not just a positive the axis. And with this. We should be able to get random offset. You can see when you move it, it updates. So if you have like a huge run, like a thousand by a thousand, I don't think you want to move it around a lot because it can lag. And yeah, so this is for the X offset. We can also do the same for. Uh, height and depth. <coughs> I just rename this. So depth and uh, also height. So we can just copy paste this code and replace depth. Just hover over it and you get this change node. Just like that. Uh, it is still so messy. And we'll uh, take the depth now. So we plug in the depth into uh, the multiplication here, like that. And then we do the same thing once again. I just move this over a little bit. You can see here. Okay. And the last one here and here. So oh, we also need to replace the height. So now, uh, oh, maybe we should have the default value at zero actually. Oh, maybe, no. Oh, yes, I understand now. We don't want to multiplicate, actually, I think. We need to do the add, actually. Sorry about that. But uh, if you hold control, you can reroute it and just move it over here. So we can delete this, control C, control V, move this here, move this here. And the same thing for the last one. Bam, bam, and bam. Like that. And uh, the default value should, should be zero. Sorry about that. So now this should be it. A complete cube. You can change the width. And if we do some width offset, like 5, maybe 50, it will only be offset on the x-axis. And if we do 50, it's the y-axis. Maybe 500 here, like this. So looking pretty cool. And this is how I made the walls. So if we do this like 10 and... Uh, yeah, so it looks quite a lot like the walls I have. Just need to change the material. Uh, and you could also be able to select the material because right now it will take the mesh as material. So if you go here, <coughs> ah, my throat is a little bit sore, but uh, we take this and we can set material, I believe like that uh, so we can add a reroute here go up and go back in 
and instead of choosing here we can promote to a variable and we can just call it the material actually and the default material I'll use one of mine here and just push this uh, like that, like that so, now we can choose your materials here this one is really dark um, and something else you could do is that you can have random meshes if you want to have multiple you could do that so I have a reference on my second monitor let me just take a look so what we can do is we have this box uh, we can also have another box uh, box one will do and we can have a um, oh, I just drag it in box and box okay so we go here and select select object uh, hmm no not like this not that select this select is it okay like this and that will do fine so random integer in range so we can take that in range so right now right now we only have two meshes so zero and one it can be either one of them and with this we can plug this into the here and also here uh can remove that one so now it should choose either one of these but they are both the same so if you take another one oops like this you can see that there are different meshes like that and if you want the ability to toggle randomness or not something you could do is add another select uh, 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 uh. okay so we have either this or we can have um, which I just did both of them I guess so add another one we can choose this one or we can choose this one so uh, select mesh index we'll make it public so by default it's at zero so in that case it will choose the random and if it's one it will be the first box and if it's two it will be the second box so let's test that so zero one and two nice and that is basically it i didn't have anything else to show you hope you understood and if you don't understand or you need some help you can comment or join the discord in the description Thank you for watching.